Hello, it's Michael Fernandez. Uh, I'm the CEO at Functional Solutions International, otherwise known as FSI, and we specialize in uh, the uh, software for the education sector globally. Uh, and in particular, we specialize in amazing cloud-based library automation systems, very affordable solutions for libraries of any size. And we also specialize in content for educational institutions, for teachers to be able to use to communicate and teach uh, any topic across any year level and any curriculum. Today, we're going to be talking about the effective use of YouTube uh, for schools, universities, and for teachers, and the best way to use uh, YouTube at your educational institution. YouTube is one of the most exhaustive and most used multimedia source for teachers to communicate uh, topics and curriculum outcomes to students. Uh, we doubt there is a topic or an outcome that you are required to communicate and teach to your students that you will not find available on YouTube, not by one teacher, but dozens of other teachers that have gone before you. So uh, what we know about uh, teaching and the use of YouTube is that more than 90% of schools globally use YouTube to teach and communicate topics to their students. The second thing we know is that more than 70% in each school, of teachers in each school, use YouTube to teach and communicate with their students. The third thing we know is teachers generally never use an entire YouTube clip. It takes too long and uh, they're not really interested in all the other issues. They're just focusing on one topic. They usually, usually would like to show just parts of a YouTube clip. Uh, number four, 100% of teachers would like to add uh, question and answers and worksheets to a section of a YouTube clip if that was possible. So they would love that opportunity and that facility to be able to do that. What we've also found is number five, 100% of teachers would like usage, usage statistics on their lessons comprising YouTube usage by their students. So no use just having a YouTube clip and then giving it to students and having question and answers. They would like to know which students have engaged, how often they, uh, they have engaged and how frequently they are engaging. Number six, uh, let us show you how we address all of the above and a whole lot more. Let us show your school YouTube tips and tricks and how to get the best out of YouTube at your educational institution. Should you need to contact us, this is our contact details. You can contact us 24 hours a day, seven days a week from any country on the planet. Okay, so you can contact us by email at smarties at fsi-pl.com or you can contact me personally at michael.fernandez at functionalsolutions.com.au. You can even go to our website, which is www.functionalsolution.com.au, which will give you an overall view of us. Or you can go to our content site, which is www.tvforeducation.com. If you need to ring us, you can ring us on that international number. Or if you need to or want to communicate with me direct from anywhere in the world at any time, that's my mobile number. Feel free to ring me anytime. A short video on the best way to control the use of YouTube at your school will now follow and we are going to address a number of issues. 
Okay, so very quickly, how to build a repository of all YouTube and other multimedia and other digital content used at uh, your school by all teachers. Next, we're going to teach you how to search for YouTube content being used currently at your school. And number three, how to search for content on YouTube to add to your school's collection. Uh, number four, how to manage and redirect all YouTube uh, URLs or www.youtube.com or in our case in Australia, www.youtube.com.au or any other YouTube uh, uh, country-wide URL. How to redirect any time a teacher puts these URLs in, it'll take you to your school's YouTube controlled landing page. So they'll be able to do everything they do in YouTube except you manage the content that is now being used and you'll be able to archive that for other teachers that come after the individual teacher that's using a particular YouTube content. Number six, how every teacher and student can have their own repository instead of having to access the entire school repository or worse than that, having to search YouTube to try and find that individual YouTube lesson that the teacher was talking about. Number uh, six is we guarantee uh, to get you results for any topic, for any age group, and any curriculum outcome. So if you can't find something on YouTube, why not have a look at how we go about guaranteeing to give you content for your particular teaching requirement. Number seven, we guarantee no distracting external advertising and comments on YouTube that's going to chew up bandwidth and that's also going to uh, distract your students and we do it all legally. Number eight, how to clip YouTube videos just to get the exact individual section or sections that you want either from one video or multiple videos. And we deal with that in item number nine because you might want three minutes of one video in YouTube five minutes of another video in YouTube and possibly another six minutes of another YouTube video that you have made yourself and how to put it all together and make a virtual video that just brings and plays just those sections transparently for your students. Number 10, you might want to add question and answer sheets. You might want to add uh, games. You might want to add surveys and other exercises to the new clip that you've put together from YouTube or any other multimedia digital source. We'll show you how, how, it, how easy it is to do that. Now, number 11, we know it's illegal to download or copy YouTube. And you may not be aware of it, but it'll breach YouTube license, Google license, and also the, the uh, intellectual property of the individual that put that YouTube uh, clip up there. So we don't do it but we're going to show you how it can be done legally to just use YouTube and use sections of YouTube without actually downloading the YouTube clip and storing it locally. Number 12, how to share individual content with your colleagues and with your students. So you might get a YouTube video uh, or a mixture of YouTube and other videos and create your own virtual video. You might create question and answer sheets. And now that you've got that, you might want to share it with your students and then keep track of who's used it and how they've used it. So we're going to show you how to do that. And 13, how to track who uses your items and how you can directly communicate with the people that are using, with the students, with your faculty, that are using the uh, items that you have created from YouTube or from other digital multimedia items. So before we start, this is our contact information and please feel free to contact us. You might want a more detailed presentation, you might want an interactive presentation on what we do. We are happy to uh, do that for you 
and we welcome the opportunity to engage with you no matter where you are in the world, doesn't matter what country you're in, you can use our tools and you can use our cloud solution. And best of all, it is not going to break your budget. I believe you will be amazed at how cost effective and how functional and how totally inclusive and easy to use uh, our product and our products to make YouTube easy for your institution, for your teachers and your students. So without any further discussions, let's start the presentation. If you are using our content library and our content system for uh, the delivery of multimedia and digital content, your institution will be provided a cloud uh, application that requires no apps, no plugins, no servers. It works on any browser, on any device, and it'll have, will give you a specific URL for your uh, collection. And then what you will see when you log in, you will see a list of all the digital material that is used at your school every piece of digital material we don't we don't care what it is but if it's digital it's used over here okay and it'll all be stored in this particular area and so we give the school unlimited storage we give the every teacher unlimited storage and we give the student unlimited storage and there are no limits on any of the other things like bandwidth utilization or whatever from our end everything is unlimited and you can bring this up on an Apple, on an iPad, on an iPhone, an Android phone. It really doesn't matter. Okay. So all the school's content will be stored in your school's collection and only accessible by your school and its patrons. So no one else from anywhere else in the world will be able to access your content unless you give them a login to your school's network. Okay, so that's the initial screen and that screen can be tailored. You can uh, tailor that screen to show a bit more information. You can show it in a different way. Okay, or you might decide to make sure that instead of only being half the screen, that it actually takes up the entire screen and the preview pane, this side is not displayed at all and it's just a pop up. OK, now because we're dealing with YouTube, this particular site, I'm going to go and do a search of YouTube. And this is all the content from YouTube that this site uses. OK, and when I grab that and I scroll it down, it'll bring up the next page and the next page and the next page. And eventually you'll come to the very first document that was ever uh, the very first file that was ever put onto the school's collection. But this is what the uh, YouTube uh, screen looks like, okay? Uh, and the uh, YouTube collection at your school. Now what I'm going to uh, do is, I'm going to show you, all right, if that's all my school's collection, how do I get my YouTube content uh, that I want from YouTube and put it into this collection? And that's very easy. All you do is you click on TV for education and only the teachers have access to this button. OK, students don't have access to this button. Students have access to what you have added into the school's collection. So we make sure that we are not going to be wasting time of the students by them getting off on a tangent and wandering through the collection. They only have access to what's up here, and this is the school's collection, and they will not have that TV for Education button. It's only for the teachers. When the teachers click on that, it will take them to an area where they can find content from YouTube and a whole lot of other digital areas as well. But because we're only dealing with YouTube, but that's all we're going to search. So if I click in here and I type in maths and hit enter this will bring up all the maths uh, content that we've got except i want only maths from youtube so if i click on youtube that's going to bring up all the youtube content that other teachers 
are using. That's why we call it curated YouTube. So other teachers from around the world that have used uh, any YouTube content, that's in there. And then, of course, I can go load more and load more. But if I'm just a YouTube person, it'll just bring up YouTube. And so if you went to YouTube and did a math search and you came here and did a math search, you'll get the same results. OK, now, if you're looking at this con uh, this video uh, and uh, you're looking at YouTube and you go, oh, that's interesting. I want to have a look at that. So when you click on that. It will bring up the YouTube video. OK, and the teacher can play that video and look at that video. Now, if you wanted to add that video to the school's collection, all you need to do is when the video comes up and all the synopsis for that video comes up, if you want it added to the school's collection, you just click the star. And it says this item has been added to your school's collection. OK. So that's how easy it is to add a video to the school's collection. So if you now say, ah, oh, I like this particular video, I want to add that to the school's collection, go ahead and just click that star and that will add it to the school's collection. OK, and if you want to load more of the YouTube maths, you just go down here and learning basic maths. That sounds interesting. I'm going to use that. I'm going to add that to my school's collection by clicking the star and that's added to the school's collection. And that's how easy it is to add content to the school's collection. Now, if I go back to my school's collection, okay, whenever students access the school's collection, what it's going to do, it will bring up all your videos on this side, okay? Or you can do a YouTube search and it'll bring up just the YouTube videos on here, okay? and you'll find the videos that are coming up over here. So it's very easy for teachers to just go to TV for Education. They can do it at home. They can do it at school. They can do it in the staff room. They can do it traveling in a plane if they've got uh, internet access. They can do it on a train. They can do it in a cafe. So whenever you want to search for anything, if you click YouTube, okay, and then in here, if you put the search term, okay, that will bring up YouTube that other teachers are using and the general YouTube account. And you can go ahead and search YouTube from here and add content from here. Now, item four on our checklist of all the things you can do was how can I whenever the teachers type in www.youtube.com on their browsers when they're on, at school uh, or youtube.com.au or dot, uh, NZ or whatever country you're from, if you bring up YouTube Global or YouTube Local for your country, can I get them, uh, can I redirect to this page? Very definitely yes. And the reason why you do that, so whenever they type in YouTube and it brings them uh, to this particular page, what it means is that if a teacher is looking at a YouTube uh, video from here and they say, I can use that in the class, all they need to do is just click that star and it'll automatically add that video to the school's collection. So you're not going to lose uh, YouTube videos that has been used at your institution just because that teacher has now left. If the teacher has left, it's not an issue. All you need to do is just uh, call up the system and it will show you all the videos that they used are now in your collection. So it doesn't matter what country you're from. Uh, if you're using our YouTube section, you can add, you can make sure that whenever your staff at your school try to bring up YouTube, it can get automatically directed to this page in TV for Education so that every time they use YouTube, it'll get added to your school's collection. Now, if I go back to my school's collection, okay, you're going to see the entire collection of your school YouTube uh, items. There they are, okay? 
Now, if you've got a hundred teachers and they're all adding YouTube videos and other digital videos uh, at the rate of about two a day, by the end of the year, you're going to have a thousands and thousands of digital videos on there. And then if you wanted to search for the video you used, you'll need to remember some search term and put it into this particular place here. Okay. So you can go and find your uh, search material that you've added to the collection. But you can just click on my items as a teacher and it will bring up only the videos that you have added. Okay. And that's the big advantage of uh, the YouTube collection, my items. So if you turn off the TV for education by just clicking on that, that'll just bring the YouTube. Or if you turn on that and then turn off YouTube, that'll remove all the YouTube and show you all the other items. So you can really uh, just zoom in on your items. And if you finish with that YouTube item, just delete it. And if I finish at this one, delete it. If I finish with this video, delete it. Okay, so as a teacher, you can manage your items. However, when you go back to the school's collection, the beauty about this is that the items never get deleted from the school's collection because there might be other teachers that are also using that video. So if you wanted to delete an existing video out of the school's collection, only the administrator or the uh, teachers who have been set as administrators have the authority to delete individual items out of the school's collection, but you have total control of your, your items. If you logged in as a student, then when you went to my items, you will only see the actual videos that you have used and not the entire school collection. So every student has their own items. Every teacher has their own my items but the entire school's collection is always here with unlimited storage and unlimited usage. Now, sometimes you might go ahead and you might say, all right, I'm going to look for some content on YouTube. So when you go into TV for education and if you clicked on YouTube or you typed in youtube.com and you say, all right, I'm looking for something maths for my year seven division. Now that's what I want. Now when you click that in, okay, division uh, in term uh, three, okay, when you click that in, you can see here uh, zero items found in the curated YouTube, but normally uh, you'll find items in, in YouTube but there is a possibility you may not have found anything in, in the YouTube because you've decided that you want to look for maths for curriculum, uh, okay? And you're looking for a particular curriculum outcome. And if you don't find that, or if you uh, it comes up with zero accounts, or you don't like what you see, you can say, I want to request some other material. So if you want to request other material, you can click on my requests. Okay. Now, this is not the school's request. This is the individual teacher who's trying to build the school's repository or trying to find individual content on YouTube for what they want to teach. So all you do is I want to make a request and a topic request. So you just click on topic request. My year group is year sevens or class seven. And if you've got a curriculum code, you can put that in there and say that is the uh, Australian national curriculum code. So you can put that in there. And then what you would do is if it's subject, you type in maths and the lesson aim to teach uh, division to some very advanced learners. And you can also give us a bit more information. If you've got 
uh, requirement that's been given to you that you need to that you're going that your students are going to be tested on the outcome why not paste the requirement in there as well and then you go submit and what will happen is when you do that you need to give us 48 hours and our researchers here will then email you because we know who you are and we know from your login which institution you're from and we'll send you a list of resources to meet every requirement that you've put in over here okay and we won't send you just one we'll send you a number of resources for you to choose from and if it's too basic or too complex or too sophisticated for the exact outcome you want not a problem you just submit another request and say look you sent me this information it was a little bit too basic can you take it up a few notches because our kids are really advanced so we will do that for you as well okay one of the other things we do with YouTube in education in um, our TV for education system that when you watch YouTube okay so let me just go back into uh, so here's a TV uh, here's a YouTube lesson when you watch a TV uh, a YouTube lesson when you click on it it'll bring it up here okay and tell you all about it and you can go and press play and you can go big screen if you want to okay and there's the YouTube lesson now the thing about that YouTube lesson is that um, you'll notice normally on YouTube you'll get all the comments on the outside you'll get all the comments on the bottom you'll get all the promotions and what have you you've got none of that information up here okay so you're focused on just that one particular video and that's the big advantage okay so one of the massive advantages of using YouTube through TV for education there's no distractions except for the embedded ads okay now there are you can use an ad blocker to remove embedded ads and what have you but YouTube has specifically asked us not to remove the embedded ads because that's how they fund YouTube that's how they can make that amazing resource with unlimited uh, ability for anyone to upload anything into YouTube and so you know you need to do the right thing and you've got the embedded ads but you won't find as many but we definitely trim everything on the outside okay now this video clip here so if you're watching that video clip and that video clip goes for 20 minutes but really you only want three minutes of it how can you clip that YouTube video okay so to be able to clip a YouTube video or any of the videos on here it's very simple and create a brand new video so all you do is you'll go up here as a teacher you will have smart classrooms and you go create a lesson when you go to create a lesson okay so uh, it will bring up the lesson creator and you can watch a tutorial on how to do it or very quickly you just go I want to create a lesson and say what is it and it's maths division for year seven okay now you can say that this lesson is just for my year sevens okay or you can say it's for my year 12s or whatever way you graded and classified your students allow students to uh, look at any slide because I might have six slides on this lesson but when they load it up I want them to be focused only on the first slide so in this case I go yep that's enabled and they can go to any slide they want uh, or you can say I don't want to publish the lesson yet because I'm still working on it but I'm going to publish it and you just go save and what that will now do is it'll give you a blank sheet of paper for you to be able to add video clips and it's really easy so to add information digital information to this blank sheet of paper that you're creating a lesson for it's simple all you do is you go view materials what can I add when you click here you can add text so you can add blocks of text and everything here is unlimited so you can add three pages of text that's you know talking about the lesson talking about the outcome talking about why they need to learn you can put all that in you can add websites 
you can add any URL or number of URLs to the lesson. You can even upload a file from your laptop or, or, or PC to the system. So as an example, you might turn on your camera on your laptop and say, hi kids, it's Mr. Fernandez here. I'm sorry I'm not going to be at class uh, on Friday. However, it's not a free lesson. Can you please make sure you watch the current video and also participate in the exercises and we'll be watching so you can just videotape that and you can add that or you can add a YouTube video you can add a curated video you can add a TV for education video there's a whole bunch of other stuff I'm just going to concentrate on YouTube okay and uh, in YouTube division in maths okay and that's the video I want so you can do any kind of YouTube search here because that's a pure YouTube search. So I go add that video. That video is now part of my lesson, but that video goes for 45 minutes. So I want to clip it. So I'll go to the video clipping tool and it will overlay this on top of the video. And I can then start playing the video. Okay. Or I might want to just say no. Okay. I want to go down to this part of the video all right and in this part of the video that's my start of my clip and that's the end of my clip that's all I want and I'm going to call that chapter one create a chapter and there's my chapter but if you want to create another chapter just go anywhere on that video and that's your first part of that clip and I want it for that long and that's my chapter two and then go create okay now I can save that if I want to okay so the video has been saved and it's immediately available now when you play that YouTube video what it's going to do we do not copy that video because it's illegal it breaches copyright and breaches the intellectual property of the person who put it there and we want to make sure that we keep you legal what it will do, it will automatically load the YouTube in the background, automatically fast forward to that particular time in the video, play it for that long, and then load the next section and play it for that long. And what you can do is you can say, that's fine for that video. I now want to add another video. So you go back to view materials and you can go ahead and add another video. And that's how you can add multiple YouTube clips or any digital clips and grab any section of them to add it to the collection. But you can say, no, no, I want to add some question and answers. So you can go to the get thinking, click on add, you can multiple choice, single choice, yes, no boxes, find the missing word. So I'll go multiple choice. So I can put a question, put in five wrong answers and click the one that's correct and save that. And then I can go, that's done with that question. I now want to add another question. So go back to multiple question. So you can add as many questions in a worksheet for that particular video and save it. Okay. And that's how you can add tips uh, for videos. You can add clips of videos. You can add question and answer uh, sheets. You can add worksheets. You can add games. You can add other exercises. You might have a PowerPoint presentation you want to add. You can add anything digital to this one particular item okay and so we make sure that we keep you legal and make sure that we give you that information all right now when you've got so let me just go back to my school collection okay and in that school collection there's your lesson it gets added to the collection now if you want to share a video or share a lesson with anyone, every time you bring up a video, what happens is you've got a share icon there. So you can click on that share icon and it will give you a link. And you can grab that link and you can send it as an email to your students. You can send it as an email uh, and you can put it as a link into your learning management system. You can send that link anywhere at all and embed it anywhere you want. And we will control the display of it. We'll control who watches it 
and we will make sure that we report to you who watched it, how often they watched it, and what their activity has been on that particular video or that particular lesson. Okay, so we give you a whole bunch of reports so that you are totally in control of your collection and we allow you to dictate who can watch it and who can't watch it even within your school. You might say this is a video just for my year 12s or this is a video just for my science teachers. So you are absolutely in control of everything on your system. Okay. Thank you very much for watching uh, our little exercise on uh, using YouTube in education. Your questions answered. Okay. Uh, I will now uh, revert you back to our communications page where if you'd like some more information, if you'd want a one-on-one -on -one, uh, demonstration, presentation, interactive section session, so you can uh, go through the exercise with us, no matter where you are in the world, no matter what time of day it is, day or night, we are more than happy to organize a webinar and run the system on your network so you can see it running in your environment. My, this is Michael Fernandez thanking you very much for attending this session.